You're good. Okay, the first muscle we have is the psoas major. It's the body of the transverse processes of T12, L1 through L4, and then also the transverse processes. It's the 111B on the model here. Okay. That will come down and insert into the lesser trochanter. With that, also on the anterior hip, you have the iliacus, which is going to be the anterior two-thirds of the iliac fossa. It will come across the anterior hip and also insert down onto um, the lesser trochanter. In the anterior compartment of the leg, we have your quadriceps muscles. The first one is going to be um, the rectus femoris, which will have two heads. You've got the straight head, which will be at the anterior inferior iliac spine. And you will have the reflected head that will be um, on the, what is it? The iliac bone above the acetabulum, okay? That will then come down and insert into the ischial tuberosity through the patellar ligament, which goes from there to the patella and the quadriceps tendon. Okay. We have the vastus lateralis, which is going to be this long one, starting below the greater trochanter, coming down. It's the 122B here. Okay. Um, basically, its origin is the lateral lip of the linea aspera of the femur. And it inserts down into the tubul tibial tuberosity, just like the rectus femoris. The next one is the vastus intermedius. The vastus intermedius is going to be the anterior surface of the femur. And it also comes down for the origin, and then it will insert into the tibial tuberosity. The vastus medialis is going to be this 122D. It's going to originate on the... Um, medial lip of the linea aspera of the femur, and it again inserts down on the tibial tuberosity. The last one in the anterior compartment we have is the sartorius. The sartorius is going to run from the um, anterior superior iliac spine, okay, so right here, and then that's going to run across down to the proximal one-third of the medial surface of the tibia, anterior to the gracilis, it's the most anterior of the three, that's the 121 right here. Okay, next we have the medial compartment. With the medial compartment, the first one is the gracilis, and it's the external surface of the body of the pubis, which he said is going to be more right here. Okay, that would be the origin. The insertion is going to be the proximal one-third of the medial surface of the tibia, um, which is going to be right here, down with the duck foot, uh, which is the proximal one-third, as we said. Okay. Then we have the pectineus. This is the pectineal line of the pubis. Okay. It's going to go from pectineal line to pectineal line. And on this one, the pectineal line is kind of right here. That's at 124. Okay. And it actually wraps around just a little bit more as well. Um, the next muscle we have in the medial compartment is the adductor longus. This one is going to be just next to the gracilis up here on the body of the pubis. So the external surface of the body of the pubis. It's going to insert into the middle third of the linea aspera, okay, which is right here. The adductor brevis, this one's going to be the external surface of the body of the pubis as well as the inferior ramus, so it's going to be a little bit further back, okay, more like this 126 here, and it's going to insert onto the upper one-third of the linea aspera. We also have the adductor magnus. The adductor magnus is going to be the inferior aspect of the ischiopubic ramus, which is going to be this region here, because again the pubic bone and the ischium, and the rami are in between. So from the adductor magnus, then you're going to come down. Um, it has the two portions. You have your 
adductor portion, it's going to come down um, and insert along the entire length of the linea aspera. Okay, so this one here, and it actually stops, but it'll go down to here. Okay, and then the hamstring portion is going to insert to the adductor tubercle, which, as he said, is a little bit lower than this blue mark, so about right here. The last one we have in the medial compartment is the obturator externus. Right here we have what would be the obturator membrane, so the external surface of the obturator membrane. It's going to insert into this little fossa here, which is the trochanteric fossa on the um, greater uh, trochanter. And you just have to know trochanteric fossa. Next, we have, we'll have we go ahead and do the gluteal muscles. The first one is the gluteus maximus. This portion here is that posterior gluteal line, so the gluteus maximus will originate posterior on the external surface of the ilium, posterior to the posterior gluteal line. Okay, It has two insertions. The first insertion is going to be on the um, gluteal tubercle, or tuberosity, excuse me, and then it will also insert out here on the iliotibial tract. So the upper two-thirds of the iliotibial tract, that lower one-third is the uh, gluteal tuberosity. The gluteus medius, which is this 113 here, okay, the, it's going to be the external or lateral surface of the ilium uh, for the origin um, between the anterior and posterior gluteal lines and it will insert into the posterior lateral um, surface of the greater trochanter. The gluteus minimus, which is this 114, it's going to be on the external surface of the ilium anterior to the anterior gluteal line and it's going to insert into the anterior lateral uh, surface of the greater trochanter. The tensor fascia lata, you can't see it on here, but this is the um, ischial tuberosity, or is that right? No, tubercle of the iliac crest, excuse me. From this tubercle of the iliac crest, you're going to have the tensor fascia lata that's going to come out kind of at this angle, okay? And that was the one you can see on your cadavers um, that wraps around uh, the ischial tibial tract and helps contract that. Okay. The posterior um, deep muscles. The first one we have is the um, piriformis. The piriformis is going to be found on the anterior surface of the sacrum. I'll be over here, right? Yep. Okay. So the anterior surface of the sacrum and it's going to insert into this uppermost point on the greater tubercle, or trochanter, excuse me. Okay. The next one we have is the gemellus superior, which is this 118, and it'll originate on the external surface of the um, ischial spine. And it's going to insert along with the um, gemellus inferior and um, obturator internus right behind the uh, insertion for the piriformis. Okay. I'm going to skip the gemellus inferior. We're going to go to the gemellus or the obturator internus. Okay. It's going to originate uh, on the internal surface of the obturator membrane, and it's going to run up underneath the spine, and then it's going to insert back here, right behind the insertion for the piriformis. Okay, so right in that group. Then we have the gemellus inferior, which is going to be about right here where my finger is, which would be the outer surface of the ischial tuberosity and then it's going to run back into that groove behind the um, piriformis.
The last one we have for the deep external rotators is the quadratus femoris. And the quadratus femoris is actually going to, you can see that 120 in there. Okay. That is the anterior lateral aspect of the ischium. Right, which one? Oh, okay. Right, right there. there. So the anterior lateral aspect of the ischium is its origin, and its insertion is the quadrate tubercle along the inner trochantric crest. Okay, so right here. The next one we have are the hamstring muscles. Again, on the mannequin, he said he's not going to tag the ischial tuberosity because it's not marked well. Remember, you've got the two divisions. On the medial aspect, you have the biceps femoris, which will be the medial aspect of the upper one half of the ischial tuberosity, as well as the semitendinosus muscle. On the upper, uh, or the lateral surface of the upper one half is where you have the semimembranosus. Okay? The lower one half is where you had part of the adductor magnus, okay, the hamstring portion. The biceps femoris, uh, its other origin is going to be the short head, which is going to be along the middle, um, or excuse me, the lower one third of the lateral lip of the linea aspera, okay, so it could even come further down. Both of those, its origin up here, as well as the um, short head on the linea aspera, will insert um, onto the fibular head. The semitendinosus that also started on the medial surface of the ischial tuberosity, it's going to run down, go behind the knee, and come back up here by the gracilis and be below Gracie down here. Okay, so again, that proximal one third of the medial surface of the tibia below the gracilis. The semimembranosus, again, started out on the lateral surface of the upper one half of the ischial tuberosity and it's going to run down to the posterior surface of the medial condyle of the tibia. On the lower leg, hold on. 